Our scripture passage this morning comes from the 20th chapter of the Gospel of John, the first 18 verses. Listen, hear, and receive God's word. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. She ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out, and they went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappers lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary, Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And Mary said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? And Mary, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said to he, him in Hebrew, Rabboni, meaning teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not ascended to the Father, to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. On Good Friday, I was invited to participate in a seven last word worship service at a neighboring sister church. I was blessed by the other pastors who preached as I was reminded of the agony, the anguish, and the suffering that Jesus experienced. And yet, as Jesus hung on the cross, I was also reminded that his first three words were not for himself, they were for others. He spoke a word of forgiveness for the murderous crowd. Jesus spoke a word of redemption and salvation to the thief who hung beside him. And he spoke a word of comfort and care for his mother. And then Jesus' next two words communicated his physical state. He cried out in anguish and unbearable pain. He felt abandoned. And then he cried that he was thirsty. Jesus then cried, it is finished. I have accomplished that for which I came, to be sin and atone for the sins of humanity, to redeem and reconcile them back to God. And just as Jesus took his last breath, his final words were, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Truly, Jesus' work on earth was finished, and yet there was still work to be done. Because his body was hurriedly taken off of the cross, wrapped in linen, and laid in the tomb before the beginning of the Sabbath on Good Friday, it had not been properly anointed or prepared for burial. So three days later, Mary Magdalene made her way early in the morning to the tomb that held Jesus' body. When she arrived, it was still dark, the sun, S-U-N, had not risen. 
And when she arrived, even in the darkness, Mary Magdalene realized that the stone that had covered the entrance to the tomb had been rolled away. Confused and concerned, Mary ran to Peter and the disciple whom Jesus loved, telling them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Evidently, Peter and the other disciple were making their way to the tomb early that morning as well. Perhaps they had some unfinished business to take care of. Maybe Peter was on his way there to pray and to petition God's forgiveness for denying that he was one of Jesus' followers. And maybe the other disciple came to the tomb to prayerfully bid Jesus one final goodbye. Upon hearing Mary's testimony, Peter and John ran to the tomb. They looked in and confirmed that Jesus' body was not there. But curiously, the linen wrapping that had covered Jesus' body and the cloth that covered his face, they were there. It was as if Jesus was unwrapped before his body was taken by grave robbers, or at least that's what some would have us to presume. That would have been pretty highly unlikely. The gospel does not speculate about what the disciples thought when they saw the linen and the cloth lying in the tomb. However, the scripture states, the disciple that Jesus loved believed when he looked in. However, as yet, neither completely understood the scripture that Jesus must rise from the dead. After confirming that the tomb was empty, the disciples returned to their homes. That's also a little curious in, in terms of behavior considering that they had gotten up early before the sun had risen and made their way to the tomb, where they assumed that the body of their master and teacher was still residing. We have the benefit of scripture and know that Christ, God's son, had risen from the dead. So we celebrate the triumph and mystery of Easter Sunday with songs of jubilation and exclamations of Christ has risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We look forward to the pageantry, the large crowds in worship, sharing Easter Sunday meals with family and friends, the fun of children dressed in their Sunday's finest, hunting Easter eggs and raising hallelujahs. <laughs> and some of us look forward to consuming copious amounts of jelly beans. Amen. <laughs> However, the first Resurrection Sunday was anything but a time of celebration, hilarity, and sharing food and fun with family and friends. It was a time of darkness, confusion, fear, disbelief, and unrecognition. That first Easter was a time of unfinished business because Jesus was nowhere to be found. Mary Magdalene remained at the tomb distraught and bewildered, and weeping uncontrollably. And finally, for the first time since she arrived that morning, she looked inside the tomb. And much to Mary's surprise, two angels in dazzling white were sitting at the head and foot of where Jesus' body should have been. The angels asked, Woman, why are you weeping? And Mary responded, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Mary is not frightened by the appearance of the angels. She is only interested in finding her Lord. Turning around, Mary Magdalene sees someone whom she presumes to be the gardener. Only the caretaker is expected to be in the garden near the tomb in the early morning hours. Surely he knows what happened to her Lord's body. Mary Magdalene stays in the dark in that dark, confusing, and uncomfortable place. Unlike the disciples, she did not run back home because she had unfinished business to tend to. Commentator Debbie Thomas writes, Mary Magdalene sees Jesus first because she chooses to remain in the darkness. Mary stays bewildered and bereft. And as Nadia Boltz Weber puts it, she remains present to what is real to what is actually happening. She does so even when what is real feels unbearable." End of quote. Beloved, when we venture into and stay in dark, desolate, diff difficult, and confusing places, hope, charity, and healing are possible 
They're possible when our spirits are open to what God is doing. When we cannot see clearly, when it seems there is no way out, when we have done all that we can and given our best and it still is not enough. The risen Christ shows up just as he showed up on that dark Sunday morning. But we may not recognize the risen Christ because we are consumed with our own expectations of what Christ looks like. Or maybe we are so sure of our understanding of who Christ is that we do not re realize him or recognize him when he is standing right beside us. The same is true for Mary. She does not initially recognize the risen Christ until he speaks her name. And immediately, the darkness of unrecognition is dissipated and Mary recognizes her Lord, her teacher. Christ does not allow Mary Magdalene to cling to him. He has been changed and still needs to ascend to his father. The risen Christ has some unfinished business, it seems. He tells Mary, go tell my brothers that I'm ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Christ will not allow us to cling to our preconceived or old ideas about him. You see, in the risen Christ, all things have been made new. He is now our transformed and resurrected Savior. No longer weeping or distraught, Mary Magdalene leaves the tomb as instructed by Christ and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. Thomas writes, hope in the midst of struggle is what happens when ordinary people brush up against an extraordinary God. This is what it looks like when broken, hungry humanity encounters a bizarre, bizarre and inexplicable love in the half-light of dawn, end of quote. Beloved people of God, we have all encountered the Spirit of God standing beside us in barren, desolate, painful, and broken places in our lives. We have all encountered the Spirit of God standing beside us during times of celebration, joy, and peace. And yet each of our experiences is unique and individual because God knows us as individuals and God calls us by our names. In the words of Debbie Thomas, Whatever acclamations we cry out on Easter Sunday must begin with a willingness to linger in the garden, desolate and alone, listening for the sounds of our own names spoken in love. For our testimonies to ring true, they must originate in radical, intimate encounter. The question is not why should people in general believe, but rather, why do you believe? How has the risen Christ revealed himself to you? End of quote. As we prepare to gather at table this morning and remember our risen Savior, I ask you to ponder these questions in your heart. Have you brushed up against an extraordinary God in darkness? And if you have, did you run away and go back to your ordinary existence? Or did you linger? so that God could call your name and you could be changed. Yes, the message of Easter is darkness, confusion, and incomplete understanding. And the message of Easter is faith, hope, miracles, mystery, and most of all, love. Jesus' work on earth was indeed finished. But we have unfinished business to tend to, people of God. So like Mary Magdalene, run and share the good news of the gospel that in Christ Jesus we are forgiven. Run and share the good news to everyone that you see that we have seen and encountered the risen Christ. Run and care for the least, the lost, and the left behind and call them by their names, not by their circumstances. Run and tell someone that sin no longer has power over us, that death and the grave are not our final resting place. Run and tell someone that because Christ got up from the grave, 
And because he has unconditional and continued eternal love for us, we have the promise of life eternal. Run, people of God, and love like we are loved. Run and tell someone, Christ has risen. He is risen. Alleluia. Alleluia. And it is so. Amen.